John Kansas. You may remember him. He invented a radio wave machine that he believed would one day cure cancer. He got cancer researchers so excited, some are already testing it out on laboratory animals. When we first met John Kansas, he told us he didn't have a background in science or medicine, didn't even have a college degree. What he did have was a deadly form of leukemia and a determination to use whatever time he had left to come up with a better way to treat the disease. Using his wife's pie pans and what he knew best, radios, Kansas, a former radio executive, built a machine in his garage that he hoped would zap cancer cells without the horrible side effects you get with chemotherapy and radiation. We decided to keep track of John Kansas and his invention, so we followed him for over a year as he pushed to speed up the research on his machine and fought to slow down his own cancer, which was killing him. The story will continue in a moment. When we first met John Kansas back in January of 2008, he was finishing his 36th round of chemotherapy since being diagnosed with terminal leukemia. All that chemo had been keeping him alive barely. The leukemia was getting you? Getting me uh, mentally and physically. And I didn't think that one could feel this bad and still be alive as I did back in January. But we were surprised by how healthy he seemed seven months later in August of 2008 when we visited with him and wife Mary Ann at their home in Erie, Pennsylvania. And I must say, you look like a completely different person to me. <laughs> you look energetic, and you've gained some weight, am you're I right? right? You write about all of them. All of it. All How of do it. you feel? feel great. So great, he had spent the summer outside doing things he hadn't been able to do since he'd been diagnosed with cancer six years earlier, like playing 18 holes of golf a day. What happened? I decided it was time to turn the switch on and try it. Turn the switch on and try what? Try treating myself. You got in the machine? Got in the machine, adjusted it, and turned it on for a minute the first time and didn't, ah. feel, didn't feel anything strange. He had turned himself into a human guinea pig. Done it nine times. Come on. Oh, God. Nine times, and my blood work has improved all summer long. We're on vacation right now from cancer. We're, I don't know whether it's a permanent leave, but we're on, a, we're on vacation right now. <laughs> now that you feel so good, you feel great, you look good, do you have a constant worry that this is too good to be true kind of thing? Sure, I mean, it's, you wonder when the bubble's gonna break. So even though you've been feeling good for a while, uh, there's always this fear. Right. The uh, disease is relentless. It just keeps pushing and pushing and pushing. Have you noticed any lymph nodes? It was that relentlessness of leukemia that had given Kansas the idea to build his radio wave machine in the first place. When we met him back then, he showed us how the radio waves transmitted across a small field created enough energy to light up a fluorescent bulb. And I could see the radio waves. Turning the light on? Turning the light on. This proves that... He then wanted to show us that radio waves are harmless to humans. Now, wait a sec. You put your hand in there. Yes. And nothing happened. Nothing happens, no. But he knew that radio waves can heat up metal. So he wondered, if he injected a cancerous tumor with some kind of metal, would radio waves heat up the metal and cook the cancer cells to death and only the cancer cells? He tried it out on a hot dog, hot dog injecting it with a metal solution. Right. And I'm going to take the, the probe right at the injection site. To show us the temperature. I'll okay. turn the device on. The temperature went up in that one area where the metal was and nowhere else. Kansas thought he had discovered a way to attack cancer cells without the collateral damage caused by standard treatments like chemotherapy and radiation. I said, Eureka, I've done it. He managed to intrigue Dr. Stephen Curley, a liver cancer surgeon at MD Anderson in Houston. Dr. Curley thought there was so much promise in Kansas' invention, he began conducting his own research with the machine using tiny bits of gold nanoparticles that are so small, thousands of them can be injected into a single cancer cell. 
The radio waves then heat up the gold, which kills the cancer. But Kansas wasn't happy with all the time it would take Curley to get through the usual human clinical trials and approval by the FDA. He wanted to speed things up, which is why he made plans, without telling Dr. Curley, to try the machine on himself. Why didn't you tell Dr. Curley? I knew that he could not approve this, and he probably would discourage me from it. You think he would have said, don't do it? I think he would say that. When I found out about it, obviously, I was very unhappy. I did ask him if he was out of his mind, but there were a few other, you know, words in there as well. Are, they, are you out of your blank, blank, blank yeah, mind? Pretty, That's what you pretty said? Pretty much. That was pretty much it. I, I was stunned. I said, oh, my God, you know, is this going to hurt the project in some way? You know, are people going to think we're crazy? Are people going to think we're a little bit, you know, off the ranch here? Were you crazy? Uh, maybe crazy like a fox. This is the secret hiding place. There's not a, not a sign or anything. Oh, wow. This is it, huh? It was a nondescript warehouse where for three months he had been treating himself. I'm going to get in here, and I'm going to turn this machine on just to get a little bit of power. What are you twirling over here? This is a tuning knob. Okay. So I tune like this. Like on a radio? Mm-hmm. See, are, you, are you increasing the intensity of the radio waves? Well, there? when I get it tuned, when this bulb lights up, it means that there's energy coming out of here and it's going into my body. Right so, now? Right now. So, so you're doing it while I'm this I'm doing minute? it while we're talking, yeah. I got the RF device on and I'm... And that's it? That's it. His idea was to zap the cancer in his blood without injecting himself with metal particles. John had a theory, unproven, that somehow leukemia cells had a special intrinsic property that would attract radio waves. But was it really working without any metal? Let there be blood. Yeah. <laughs> to see if what he was feeling was real, he would get his blood tested after each treatment. This is your blood from this morning, mm -hmm. John. We asked Dr. Peter Dupowski, a pathologist, to compare the results to some of Kansas's old blood counts taken before he had started using his machine. Is, is this the blood of a normal, healthy person? Well, what, what I, I guess I can say is comparing the numbers that we had months ago, yeah. comparing to what I'm seeing now, there's a drastic difference towards the positive direction, towards these, these cell counts getting closer and closer to what you see in a normal individual. But Dr. Dapowski wouldn't attribute the improvement to the radio waves. And there was a dark cloud that Kansas, in his euphoria, seemed to brush aside. A CAT scan showed that lymph nodes deep in his stomach still had leukemia cells in them. I was so enthused after the first results. When I saw him again two months later, he seemed frail. I tried over and over again to try to get rid of the lymph nodes, the swelling in the stomach. Yeah, and you could feel it. I could feel it. My stomach was getting larger, and I was getting embarrassed actually walking out in public. His doctors convinced him to go back on chemo to attack the lymph nodes. And then he thought, what if I use my machine along with the chemo? Would it work twice as well? He called this the double whammy. Here I am getting chemotherapy, and uh, within an hour I'll be getting a little bit of RF therapy, and we'll see what happens. After the chemo, he went over to his lab and got in his machine for two minutes longer than usual. And did you do that without fear? Yes. You, you were getting overconfident. I was getting greedy. Greedy. Mm. I wanted what I want everybody else to have is a cancer-free body. And I wanted to do it too quickly, I think. A week later, he was in the hospital ICU with a raging fever of 105.4. His body began to shut down. You almost died. I don't remember that. Uh, but Mary Ann tells me, yes, that I thought expired. All his systems, all his, um, his heart, his kidneys, his um, lungs were all shutting down. And they were preparing me and asking me what 
I wanted to have done or on behalf of John. The last right. Right. Um, are you going to do anything like this again? Perhaps. <laughs> you aren't. We're talking about just plain ordinary survival at this point. When he was well enough, he got another CAT scan of his lymph nodes to see if his double whammy had had any effect. According to the radiologist... It's certainly not a dramatic change. The report wasn't promising, but Kansas wasn't having it. He just wouldn't accept the verdict that his machine had not worked. But it looks to me like it's quite a bit smaller. You could see in Marianne's eyes that she knew the picture was darker than her husband could deal with. That was early November. Just a few weeks after that, tests showed that his bone marrow had been taken over by leukemia cells. And three months later, John Kansas died on February 18, 2009. Even with all his hope and optimism and fight, his body simply couldn't take it any longer. Since his death, Marianne has been continuing his project, trying to raise money to advance the research. You know, he, he got in the machine to help the project. Right. Is there any fear that his having done it may have hurt the project? I hope not. I think that's why he told me to promise to continue to go on. I think he knows, he knows it works. The inevitable question is, did his going in that machine when he was on chemo end up killing him? I mean, no. that, that's... No. Definitively no. No, it did not. You know, I don't think it killed him. I don't think it shortened his life in any way. What killed John, unfortunately, was his leukemia and the effects of toxic treatments. By toxic treatments, he means chemo. Not only does he say the radio waves didn't kill John Kansas, he says they never helped him. Dr. Curley tried to duplicate in a Petri dish what Kansas had been doing to himself zapping leukemia cells with radio waves alone without any metal in them. Did that work? Uh, the honest answer is no. You know, I saw him. I'm telling you, he was completely transformed. He was, he was the picture of health. Part of that feeling better may have been the fact that he had been off chemotherapy for a while during that same time frame. He'd been off chemo for, for ages. Right. Five months. Right. If you talk to patients who've been on chemotherapy, they will often tell you that it takes them three, six, twelve months to really kind of start feeling back to normal. But the people in Erie were telling him that his blood count had dramatically improved. You know, his blood counts could have been improving because, again, he'd been coming off chemotherapy and his bone marrow was recovering enough to start make more blood cells. So what I saw could merely have been a delayed reaction to coming off chemo? Part of it may have been the placebo effect. Um, the human mind is a remarkable thing. That you would know. be astonishing. And that's, that's, a, very, astonishing, that's a very powerful force. We're there. Okay. Perfect. So what does this mean for the Kansas machine? Dr. Curley says the original idea, injecting cancer cells with gold nanoparticles and then zapping them with radio waves, is full steam ahead. Here's what you told us the last time. You said the, this is the most exciting thing that you had seen in 20 years of cancer research. Do you still feel that way? Absolutely. No change. Oh, this is your new lab. If anything, he's more enthusiastic. He's gotten funding for this new multi-million dollar state-of-the-art lab. Oh, look at this. Curly Lab Group where, as the board says, he's been working on more than a dozen different projects. But are they all related to John's machine in some way? Yes, every single one of them. Dr. Curley's ultimate goal is to treat metastasized cancers that have spread throughout the body. To do that, he's been designing special molecules that can target specific cancer cells. He's attaching those molecules to gold nanoparticles and trying it out in the Petri dish on pancreatic and colon cancer cells, killing all of them. And these little nanoparticles race around and they're, they're, they're kind of honing in on just the cancer cells. Right. And then you put them in John's radio wave machine. Exactly right. And 100% killed. 100% killed. 
he's begun to move beyond the petri dish by using his targeting molecules in animals with liver and pancreatic cancer with early positive results. So you're yeah, starting yeah. with the hardest. We're starting with the hardest. We'll ultimately get down to breast cancer, prostate cancer, wow. leukemia, and lymphomas. I should have asked you what you're not looking at. <laughs> He's already published six papers in scientific journals, and he's been meeting with the Food and Drug Administration about human clinical trials. Are you anywhere near trying this on a person? No. I, I still think we're best case scenario two to three years away. Could be as much as four. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the same position I was in when we first met John, and that is uh, we don't want to be in a position to hype this. Right. John used to make me very nervous when he would go out and tout that he had developed a cancer cure. And I would cringe and I would say, John, do not use the cure word, please. So I'll, I'll state very bluntly, I don't know that we are going to have a cure. I think we are going to have an effective treatment and hopefully a treatment that is minimally toxic to patients, unlike most of the treatments we now have. Okay, John died, but you've promised him his idea won't. That's exactly right. I promised John we were going to get this treatment to human clinical trials. We are going to succeed. And that's where we're at. We are pushing forward.